Hey folks, just getting started and sharing some things across uh, platforms to Facebook and uh, just give me one moment. See a few more people are joining. Uh, just give me one more moment, making sure we kind of share this broadly. Uh, it's fun. It's fun getting used to all these uh, virtual virtual uh, tools. Um, Um, so thanks, thank you guys for tuning in. Just good morning. This is Alderwoman Maria Haddon, uh, Alderwoman of the 49th Ward. I'm here in our 49th Ward Service Office, um, which uh, is currently closed to the public. Um, so many of you um, should have received newsletters, updates, but also if you're walking by the office on any regular basis, you'll see the sign. But um, we are working remotely, so the 49th Ward staff is working from home. Uh, we are virtually capable of, of taking care of all the service requests and regular needs that you have. We are currently prioritizing things related to coronavirus and COVID-19 outbreak. 
um, working to support our community for housing needs, food needs, um, information and medical services uh, and referrals to those. So, um, but please still call the office um, or email us is better if you're able to. Um, staff are regularly checking our voicemail, we're checking email and responding um, so that we can keep serving you. Um, other uh, just kind of top of uh, the video announcement, just wanna encourage folks to sign up if you haven't already for the newsletter updates. So you can see I've got a link in the uh, video chat box, but you can go to our website at 49thward.org. That's 49thward.org. You can sign up there for the newsletters. Um, the last couple of weeks, it's been kind of two newsletters a week. Um, definitely Friday is always going to be kind of the weekly update roundup, uh, but I have been sending out more frequent blasts as needed. Um, also, I've asked folks to um, share them, share this update and this information more broadly. Um, I will make a request that if you're sharing this through your email distribution uh, kind of blaster networks, um, do me a favor and please just kind of forward the message in its entirety. Um, I would prefer if folks didn't editorialize um, or kind of take words or bits from the newsletter um, because I think that can be a little confusing is we're trying to make sure folks get consistent information, um, especially from my office. So um, yeah, please share information. If you're looking to share your own information um, about public health updates or public service updates, you can find lots of materials at chicago.gov forward slash coronavirus and also on the state's website. Um, so that's going to be kind of your go-to spot for the most up-to-date coronavirus-specific information. Um, and then, of course, our newsletter, we're doing the public updates. We'll be sharing resources and information um, that you may need uh, um, and uh, access to. So uh, that's kind of the number one thing we're doing right now. Um, so I wanted to start off, as we have some more folks joining, um, with something that we do in the newsletter every week, and also when we're meeting with staff, we do. Um, and during this very stressful, um, unique time, uh, we could all use a, a little bit of a celebration. So I'm going to start off with some celebrations and appreciations that, uh, that I want to share. Um, so a couple of these were in the newsletter this week. Um, but I just want to celebrate our Rogers Park 49th Ward residents. Um, you guys are really stepping up. We're all going through um, a pretty big scary time and our neighbors are reaching out and taking care of one another you see we've got a rogers park community response team we've got i think about 300 volunteers at this point people who are ready to uh, they're staffing a, a hotline they're putting people in touch with resources they've created a website where we're managing and resourcing as much good consistent information as possible um, we've got volunteers who have coordinated a way to do contact-free delivery for important vital things that people need like food and medicine. Um, so a uh, big shout out to all of our Rogers Park neighbors, our community organizations who are making this possible. Um, folks are doing arts and crafts projects and finding ways to um, make sure that the social distancing doesn't mean that we are socially isolating. Um, keep those things coming. We're gonna need the, the creativity. We're gonna need different ways to make sure that people don't feel alone and that we're still connecting and, and meaningfully engaging with each other over these next couple of weeks. Um, uh, I, I checked our office email this morning and uh, Chad Willett over at Lupiano, um, another shout out. Uh, Lupiano is trying to do public service announcements and encouraging other places of business and industries to help make masks and provide what they can for other personally protective equipment. And in their efforts, right, they're raising money to help support their musicians and to do a public service announcement um, that's creative and interesting. Um, Chad and the crew over at Lupiano are actually making masks. Um, so if you guys stop by, they are doing, um, as all of our restaurants and coffee shops are doing, curbside pickup and delivery, right? You can still order food. You can stop and get your coffee at the door. Um, they're doing kind of contact-free things. Even um, after 5 p.m. when the executive order goes into place, our restaurants and businesses will be able to continue this. 
Um, but when you stop by the piano, you can also pick up masks. So these are not N95 masks. They are not clinical masks. But what they are are things that could help just to reduce droplet. Um, so they're droplet deterrents. They're things that maybe you can wear when you're out shopping and doing kind of your essential things just to kind of keep yourself a little bit safer and from, from spreading uh, germs abroad. So again, they're not clinical masks, but they're, they're little things that are going to help keep us a little cleaner, a little safer, and help encourage the social distance that we need to practice right now. Um, so I want to say uh, thanks to the crew at Lupiano uh, and for a jazz club stepping up to uh, make masks. Um, so just a few examples of everybody who's uh, chipping in and doing their part to help our community, our city, and our families get through a difficult time. So I just want to thank folks. Um, if you know of somebody or some organization or you yourself are doing something that you think should be shared um, to help us just kind of promote good news, good practices, um, please send it to our social accounts or send it to my office email. That's office at 49thward.org. So let's dig into a few important updates. And I did get a couple of questions that folks sent into the office email account that I want to address in the time that I have with you all this morning. Um, so one, we know that the governor issued an executive order, uh, a stay at home order. So this stay at home order or shelter in place, as uh, I think it's called in the executive order, is uh, begins at 5 p.m. today. And important things that you need to know, right? And, and the governor kind of tried to go over this and we did briefings with the mayor as well. Um, let's focus on kind of things that are staying the same and then things that are different. Um, so things that stay the same. So as I mentioned earlier, essential businesses are still operating. So this includes um, restaurants, um, even convenience stores, right? Places that sell food or beverage. Um, uh, this includes um, gas stations, this includes pharmacies, right, doctor's office, um, things of that sort, and then other um, businesses that have deemed essential services. So a lot of our charities, social service agencies, um, those are all still deemed essential. So there are, um, for most of us, the stay-at-home order is not going to have a huge impact um, is a difference in, in what we've been doing over the last week. So know that you can still order carry out, you can order pickup, you can go to the grocery store. Um, some other important things are that you as an individual, um, you're allowed to go outside for a walk. You're allowed to go to the park for a run. Um, you are allowed to step outside to get some fresh air, right? This is not a, a martial law enforced type of uh, activity. You're also allowed to do things that are essential to you. So you're allowed to go grocery shopping. You can go do your laundry. Um, you are strongly encouraged to practice social distancing when you are doing these things. So that is that six feet or more space between other people. Um, and of course, all of this is assuming that you are not sick. If you are sick, if you have fever, if you're coughing, if you're sneezing, um, if you've got any of the symptoms associated with COVID-19, the like the disease called by the coronavirus, you need to stay at home. So that is an actual order um, within the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois now. If you are sick, exhibiting these symptoms, um, even if you're not necessarily confirmed, you need to stay at home. Um, so please do not go out if you are sick. If you're sick or exhibiting symptoms, but you're alone and you need help getting access to food or other vital resources, um, I encourage you to reach out um, to my office. We can put you in touch with um, some of our community resources and folks that are working on these efforts. You can also reach out directly to the Rogers Park Community Response Team. So the website is rpcrt.org and the phone number um, we have a hotline that's staffed by volunteers. The phone number is 773-831-7668. Again, that's 773-831-7668. Um, so please stay home if you're sick. Um, if you are feeling very unwell, if you believe you need medical assistance, um, please call your healthcare provider. If you do not have one, please reach out to our Chicago Department of Public Health. You can reach them at 
3127467425 again that's 3127467425 you can also call 311 if it's a medical emergency please still call 911 um, they will direct you to the appropriate services so we know that under the executive order, we can take a walk, we can walk our dogs, um, we can organize, I think we have at 7 p.m. today, a giant open window, John, Bovi, John Bon Jovi uh, sing-along. Um, you can organize these activities. I've seen people having virtual game nights, uh, virtual play dates for their kids. Um, so, you know, use the, use the, the technology and the materials you have available, um, read a book, call some friends, catch up. Um, but the idea is we're trying to slow the spread of this disease so that we do not overwhelm our already taxed medical care system. So we need people to stay at home as much as possible, even if you're healthy. Um, that's why we're doing this at the state level and at the city level. Um, a couple of other things that you are allowed to do under the executive order. Um, you are allowed to help one another. Um, so social services, charities um, are allowed to operate. You are supposed to be following guidance for your industry. You can, again, find directions and guidance from the uh, Chicago Department of Public Health at chicago.gov forward slash coronavirus if you have questions. Um, also, please reach out to my office. Um, uh, so you're allowed to do uh, contact-free food delivery, med delivery. You're allowed to babysit, right, your family's kids, and you're allowed to do travel related to those essential activities. Um, so, so those are all allowed. Um, I've got some comments here in the chat from folks reminding people to support our local restaurants, um, support our local restaurants and other businesses. I'll say many of them have set up ways that um, if they didn't offer um, delivery before, they're doing it now, they're partnering with other organizations. Um, we've also got the Rogers Park Business Alliance that is maintaining a list and helping a lot of our local businesses um, with the technical support they need in order to sell gift cards online. So they actually on rpba.org, Rogers Park Business Alliance's website, so rpba.org, there um, you can easily find a whole list of resources for small businesses and entrepreneurs, um, as well as resources for us. So they're maintaining a list of Rogers Park businesses that are open and or receiving donations. So a lot of the businesses have GoFundMe links, ways that you can help to support their staff during this difficult time. Um, they've also got a list of the dining at a distance resources. Um, so be sure to check those out. Um, I see some other questions uh, or suggestions too. Barbara says, write a letter. Uh, wouldn't you love to get actual mail for friends or family? I think uh, letter writing might come back uh, big time, Barbara, I agree with you. Um, so uh, another reminder um, from people, from Lisa here, that it's really important that people practice extra care as asymptomatic people can still be spreading the virus. Um, that's a really good point, Lisa. Um, so just reminding people that you can be asymptomatic, you can have it and maybe not know it, you can spread it, which is once again, while if you're feeling well and if you're healthy, we still need people to practice social distancing and limit your activities to things that are essential to you staying well. Um, so a couple of um, just kind of updates. Oh, we got another question here. Will medical supply stores still be open? Um, Jocelyn, yes. Um, so things that are deemed essential, they're still going to be open. Um, people are putting in helpful suggestions here when you're going to the laundry room in your building or the laundromat. Um, take some Lysol wipes or cleaning wipes. Um, I know I've seen a lot of people wearing gloves. Um, that's really helpful. Remember when you're out, um, you know, avoid touching your face, your eyes, right, your mouth, your ears. Um, since we know that the virus can live on a lot of surfaces. And then of course, within your own realm, your domain, your workspace, your home, please make sure that you're cleaning your surfaces frequently. Frequently touched surfaces um, are some other um, recommendations that we're getting from our health department. So I wanna encourage people to do um, a couple more things. Um, so the city now has a, um, SMS, like a text hotline. 
and I'm checking out their, their code here. Um, so the city is trying to send out frequent text alerts. Um, so you can receive those alerts um, by texting 78015, that's the phone number, 78015. And what you wanna text is COVID-19. Um, I signed up for this yesterday and just as a pro tip, um, the graphic in my newsletter and that the city put out recommends typing COVID-19, that won't work. You have to type in COVID-19, all one word, all together in order to get subscribed. And I'll input that information in the chat box when I have a moment here too, and make sure that we share that updated information um, in our written communications as well. Um, so on our Rogers Park Community Response Team website, so um, rpcrt.org, we're all that's the best place where we are cataloging all the detailed information and resources for people. Um, you know, Brian White here commented about um, sharing financial counseling and referral sources for people worried about filing unemployment. So we definitely have information there on that page. You can also call the hotline again um, for referrals and questions. I will say right now um, you can file unemployment. We have expanded unemployment benefits that the governor has authorized. I have heard from multiple people that um, the phone systems are, oh, thanks Lisa, um, that the phone system is overloaded and that the website even keeps crashing. Um, I know that it is um, very difficult. This is uh, more resources are being added to make sure that they can handle all of the web traffic and the phone calls. Please keep trying. Um, so that's the best information I have for you right now if you're filing for unemployment, please keep trying. Um, if you are paying rent and you have had um, a loss of employment or a loss of income, please call your landlord or management company and ask them for a rent abatement or a reduction. Um, so this is something where at the city level, we do not have the legal authority to freeze rent. I know that there's a campaign moving at the state level. Um, where we're seeing if this is a possibility, right? If the governor can ask for a rent freeze um, or some other, um, some other abatement. We have different property laws here in the United States than other countries have. And so it's unclear what legal um, uh, authority the governor has to do this. Um, it might have to be at the federal level. I can tell you we don't have legal authority at the city level, but we are from all levels of government strongly encouraging property owners and landlords to come up with some kind of financial assistance package for their tenants, and that's commercial and residential. Um, so what I would encourage with your uh, a renter for your, an apartment, if you are a small business who rents, what I am asking you to do here in our ward, I want you to call your landlord, call your management company, inquire as to what kind of program or what kind of uh, financial assistance they are giving to you as a tenant. Um, I want you to email me at office at 49thward.org with the information you receive. Um, so if you can let me know kind of your address, who's the management company, who's the landlord, what response did you receive? Um, if you have a difficult landlord, I want to know that as well, right? So I want to know what's their name, what's the company, what's their contact information, and what kind of response you got from them. So we're trying to catalog this information um, so that my office and myself can be as in as much assistance. Because of course, if you're a landlord yourself, um, you're also going to be in a difficult financial situation. And that's where though, at the government level, we might have a few more options. So I know that um, when we look at mortgages, there's already um, certainly a freeze on uh, evictions and foreclosures and any of those procedures, like those all have been done as basics. But also um, the federal government through their lending agencies is rolling out a lot of support for property owners um, and for federally backed mortgages. And many private companies are also setting up um, some kind of financial relief package for people with mortgages. So if you're a homeowner, or a property owner, um, I strongly encourage you to also call your lending agent and figure out what they're doing, what kind of programs they have, and please also share that information with my office. That's office at 49thward.org.
and I'm typing that in. There you go. Um, so please share this information. We're going to try and keep it as resources. Um, so one, if you, if we find out that there's a, a large landlord in the ward that is absolutely, you know, kind of doing something to help residents, that stuff I can add to my resource site. If we find out that there's a property owner or a management company that's making things difficult or is, um, not working with folks, I'm happy to reach out to them to see what we can work out, what they need in order to be able to offer more resources to you. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the most important ways that we can help residents as people deal um, with the financial fallout from this. Um, for small businesses, there are going to be, I think the Senate is still working on um, what the federal aid package is going to be. We know that there will be uh, significant funds going through the SBA um, Department for Small Businesses. We have been in touch with our local financial partners so that as soon as that rolls out, we can start getting people in touch here at the local level. But we also know that the city has launched uh, a small business resilience fund. Um, so this was put together uh, by Mayor Lightfoot's office with uh, $50 million from the treasurer, uh, so treasurer Melissa Connors Erver's Catalyst Fund and um, some individual philanthropy dollars um, put in. So March 31st is the goal for when applications will be open for small businesses. Um, I will, again, share more of that information um, through our newsletters and written communications um, to make sure that folks in our neighborhood have access to that. Um, I got an email this morning that their website has finally been translated into Spanish. Um, they'll be adding more language for better language access um, coming up pretty soon. And so what the city is going to be offering are very low interest loans for up to five years. Um, they'll be coordinating with individual businesses um, to make that possible. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the chat there. Um, I'll get to your question in one second, Lisa. Um, and so we are doing what we can at the local level. There's also a larger Chicago area community fund. So that's also a newsletter in the chat here as well. Um, for those of you who aren't on the list, you can read that. So links to um, the Small Business Fund information as well as the Chicago Community Trust and United Way of Chicago have put together a larger fund. I think they're already over $10 million that they've raised. Um, they'll be distributing money to local nonprofit organizations um, who can then help people with rent, help people with food, help people with childcare needs. Um, so the city is really coming together to make sure that we're taking care of one another. Um, so getting back to a couple of the questions we've got here. Um, uh, I hear some frustration here about loans and uh, where is the small business bailout? I wholeheartedly agree with you. I feel like, um, especially having had my own financial emergency during our last financial crisis with the housing crisis, it was very frustrating to see large bailouts come at the federal level for big companies and to have very little aid um, make it down to individuals and small businesses. Um, that's why I think it's really important that the city of Chicago is stepping up to do what we can since we don't know um, completely what will come down through the small business, like through the SBA at the federal level. That's also why it's important that if you can locally, we need to step up and support our small businesses. So again, I recommend folks check out um, the Rogers Park uh, Business Alliance website. They're going to be the clearinghouse of all information um, for both our small businesses and entrepreneurs, as well as they're maintaining the list of our businesses that are open um, during this time so that we can continue to support them. Um, so moving on, we've got another question about resources for our homeless neighbors. Um, so yes, right now, um, the best bet, so our Department of Family and Support Services had a briefing for us yesterday. Um, many, uh, so our community service centers are remaining open um, and our community, like all the structures that they have set up for people are still open. Um, we also have a few of the nonprofit organizations and charities that will be continuing um, to operate and service folks. Um, some changes that are coming in the next couple of days um, are specifically the city is working on expanding our access to shelters and to other spaces. So 
We're looking at decommissioned schools. Um, we're reaching out to hotels, colleges, and universities as well to secure housing, um, both for our homeless neighbors um, who may need care and housing, and also for people eventually that might need isolation or quarantine. Um, so there's been a lot of outreach from the Department of Family and Support Services to both our city funded shelters and privately run shelters. Um, some of the uh, other changes are that for some of the encampments that we have around the city, um, they are sending out mobile medical teams to more frequently check in with people. And we've also distributed uh, sanitation stations. Sorry guys, trying to the phone on D&D. Um, so those are a, a few resources for now. Um, a question here about uh, the police not rousting people. Um, so let's get into law enforcement activity and kind of what's focused on, because I know this was another big announcement this week. Um, enforcement, whether it's revenue enforcement, um, low level offenses, right now everything is being shifted and prioritized towards public safety. Um, so it doesn't mean that you should park wherever you want. Um, public safety things will still be enforced. Um, so as far as vehicle parking, do not park in front of a hydrant. Do not block a driveway. Um, do not block an alley. Don't park where you wouldn't normally park. But know that um, as we're asking people to stay home, we realize that parking is even more limited in our neighborhood and in other places in the city. And so um, meters, permit parking, Things like that are not going to be enforced currently. Um, there's not going to be booting. There's not going to be kind of uh, collections. There won't be any accrual of fines and fees during this time period. And also in checking in with our 24th district um, and our state's attorney, I think, made an announcement this morning. Um, there's also really relaxing enforcement on a lot of low-level offenses. So if it's not a public safety issue... Um, right now, it's it's not getting a high priority. So we're, we're not going to see police officers out um, looking to um, confront people um, or looking to enforce things um, unless you're creating, a, unless it's a violent crime, unless somebody's reported it. Um, so still, you know, you can report things the normal way, call 911, um, certainly if you're the victim of a crime. Um, but for the most part, to, to the concern, um, Barbara, that you posted, um, they're not going to be going around looking for, for people to, to rouse from spaces. Um, it's all hands on deck right now as people in all of our departments and all of our agencies um, work to uh, keep us safe, keep us healthy, and prepare for emergency responses um, while we're in the pandemic. Um, let's see, let's see. We've got, um, I guess I'll, I want to wrap up here. I don't want to go much past this 30 minutes um, by just reminding people that we have a lot of resources within our neighborhood and within our city. And um, uh, what am I, 10 months, 10 months in to city council, maybe getting close to 11 months. Um, I can tell you that every person in the city is working nonstop to make sure that our residents are taken care of and that we not only survive this crisis, um, but come out stronger for it. So I know the, the governor has been giving some really reassuring, uh, but direct and practical uh, information during his daily briefings. If you're not watching those daily press conferences, please check them out. They usually come around 2.30 or 3 p.m. Um, the mayor has been giving a lot of information. Um, I think she's got more updates that are coming out today. I'm going to continue um, to do these virtual town halls on a weekly basis and send out the written communications. Um, but know that other than your elected officials, our city workers, our sanitation workers, um, our CDOT employees, um, our support services, right, family services, those 311 and Office of Emergency Management operators, our first responders, um, everybody is taking this seriously. We're working very hard. Um, people are working 24 seven and um, collaborating in ways that I've never seen before. And um, so know that you're, you should be proud of your city government and of your public employees. Um, we're, we're doing our best and, and I'm very proud to be your elected official, but also to be a part of the government of the city of Chicago in this time. 
Um, so a couple of final asks for you. So if you're not already subscribed to the newsletter, subscribe to the newsletter. The link is in the comments. If you are subscribed to the newsletter, um, we still have neighbors who maybe don't check email, who don't have email, who don't have internet access. I need your help spreading this information. So do me a favor, share this video. Um, by the end of this afternoon, the captions should be available in English and in Spanish. Um, so that's another thing, the newsletter um, uh, that we sent out yesterday. It's our first time also having a Spanish language newsletter. Um, so a uh, big shout out to uh, our friend Irene, who's been doing these translations um, in a rapid turnaround. Um, uh, thank you so much. Um, please, uh, if you look at the newsletter link, you'll see at the top, there's a, a link that says Lea en Español. Um, you can click on that. Um, if you live in a multi-unit building, um, consider printing out a couple of copies of these. There's some printable flyers and there's a link to a folder of public documents as well. Um, please consider forwarding this to your networks. Again, um, I mentioned earlier, um, please forward the email in its entirety. Um, please don't clip and, and chop up different sections or, or take it. Um, I, I make this ask just because it's kind of the words and the information coming out of my office and I, I don't want it to be misconstrued in any particular way. Um, so if you're forwarding it through your networks, please forward it as is. Um, add your own uh, text to it if you want, um, but please don't just copy and paste it. Um, I, I don't think that works too well for folks, um, but share the information, print it out, um, practice social distancing and please stay home unless you need to go outdoors. Um, so thank you all. We're going to keep working through this. Um, and again, contact us at office at 49th ward, uh, dot org If you've got questions, comments, um, or suggestions. Um, thank you all have a fantastic day.